Hi, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how to inspect a ramp before you put the car onto the ramp. The first thing we're going to look at is the safe working load of the ramp. This one is 2,500 kilograms. The car we're going to lift today is this Corsa and that is going to be well within the spec range of the weight of the vehicle. After we've checked the safe working load, we're then going to have a look at the ramp arms and the jacking pads just to inspect them to see if there's any wear or if the, the tables are going to turn and unscrew or any wear in the ramp arms. One of the other checks we're going to do is to make sure that the isolator switch is working and that the electrical plug is okay for going up and down. Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to put the ramp arms under the vehicle and we're going to put the jacking pads on the jacking points on the sill. Uh, we'll get a better look at that once the car's up in the air and we'll talk you through the strongest points to put the jacking pads on. Once the ramp arms are under the vehicle and on the jacking points, we can then lift the vehicle up into the air safely. Right, now the vehicle is up in the air and we're under the vehicle, I can now show you where we put the jacking pads and the ramp arms. As you can see, we've kind of placed it on, there's a reinforced plate going across the edge of the sill there, and that allows you to safely jack the vehicle up. If you don't jack the vehicle up in the right place, you can see here, there's an example of somebody putting the jack up in a place that isn't secure, and you can see the damage to the edge of the sill there. Right, now we've got the vehicle up in the air, we're going to use a wheel brace uh, to take the wheel bolts off. A wheel brace has got four different sizes on it. This one here's got 17, 19, 21 and 22. Uh, the wheel bolts, you have to use the right size. The Corsa has 17 mil wheel bolts, so always make sure you find the 17, but if you find the wrong size, what you'll probably find here, as you'll see here, Derek will it'll just be loose on the wheel bolt so make sure you find 17 and you'll feel it's in there and it's secure uh, sometimes you may have to slacken the wheel bolts with the wheel on the ground before you lift it if they're too tight so now that we've got the correct size we can go ahead and take the wheel bolts off You'll notice on the last one coming off there, the wheel started to move. So safely, two hands, get the wheel down and lay it up to the side. And it's important never to put the alloy wheel face down, obviously. You don't want to damage or scratch the alloy wheel. Now that we've got the front wheel off, we can now see the front braking system. Uh, what we're going to have a look at is we're going to inspect the front brakes. So we're going to have a look at the brake disc. Uh, we're going to look at that for any scoring or thickness, any signs of wear. Uh, we're also going to have a look at the front brake pads, which are inside the brake caliper here. Um, we're going to look there for the thickness and make sure they're not seized and they're nice and free. We'll also have a look at the caliper, the condition, make sure it's all okay. And we're also going to look at the brake flexi pipe here, make sure there's no cracks or any anything leaking in the braking system. We can also look up and see the front brake pipe there. Uh, that's going there into the flexi. Right, what we're going to do next is we are going to remove the front caliper so we can have a look at the front brake pads. Um, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove the caliper retaining bolts. On this one it is two 12mm bolts, uh, so make sure you get a 12mm 12, 12 socket, get the 3 8 drive ratchet, make sure it's set to off and remove the two caliper retaining bolts.
with the caliper removed, um, we can now see into the front brake pads and we can actually remove the front brake pads. Right, now that we've got the brake pads removed, what we've got here is a vernier gauge and we're going to use that to measure the thickness of the brake pad. In the, the manual here, you'll see that it tells you the minimum thickness and the thickness of the new brake pads. The minimum thickness on this one is 7mm. That's including the backing plate. Some uh, specifications you might find for other vehicles might not include the backing plate and just might be the friction material. So it's always good to check the manual when you're uh, checking for the minimum thickness. So in this one, the minimum thickness will include the backing plate. So Derek's just going to measure here. And you can see that that is 15.83 millimetres there. So that's well within the tolerance there. It's pretty much a new set of brake pads there, just under a new a set of new brake pads. What we can also see here in the manual is the thicknesses and the minimum thicknesses of the brake discs. Uh, this vehicle doesn't have ABS, so we're looking at brand new 11mm thickness of disc with a minimum thickness of 8mm. So we'll take this across, we'll go across to the brake disc now and we'll give this a measurement to see what we are sitting at. And you can see here it's sitting at 9.3. When you are measuring these, you do have to be careful just to make sure that there's no lip on the disc because sometimes you can get a bit of a false reading if there's a, a heavy lip on the edge of the disc. Okay. Now that we've checked the minimum thickness of the pads and the discs and we've made sure that they're all okay, um, what we're going to do before we stick the pads back in, we're going to check the slides are moving on the caliper carriers here and make sure they're going in on out okay. Um, we're going to make sure that the anti-rattle clips are in place and we're also going to make sure that the caliper piston is going to go back okay. So we're using the piston wind back tool here. Once that goes in and Derek starts turning that into place, you'll start to see the piston going back in there. That's what we would do if we were replacing the pads as well, because obviously as the pads wear down, that piston comes out further and further. So we push the piston back. So that's the piston pushed back now. So we can now go ahead and put those front brake pads back in. Uh, one of the things to check on there when we are putting them back in is just make sure that they're nice and smooth and flat, maybe a bit of emery paper just to flatten them off, any shiny bits you can see that would maybe cause any sort of squeals. And uh, just pop them back in the carrier there and then we rebuild. So that's the pads now back in place. So again, when you're putting it back on, just make sure that that brake flex here hasn't been twisted in any way and it's all nice and smooth. So pop it back on, make sure the slides are in place. Get your two retaining bolts. It's always important just to start these by hand to start with. Don't go in there with a ratchet or a spanner. Always make sure that they start by hand. So as you'll see there, Derek's just running that one in there with his fingers top and bottom. Once they've run in, then you can get your ratchet with your 12mm socket, make sure you switched it to the on position and just tighten them bolts up. And that's it, that's it now secure. Once we've tightened the carrier bolts up, it's important that these bolts are tightened to the manufacturer's specific torque settings. Um, so again, we're back at the manual here and we're looking for the brake caliper bolts. Uh, so as you can see here, that it goes on to 27 newton meters. So we've got our torque wrench here and we've set it to 27 newton meters. And that way we can make sure that that bolt is tightened to the correct setting. So we'll take it over to the car now and we'll pop our 12mm socket on the end of our torque wrench there and when it reaches the correct setting you'll hear a click. There we go. 
So when we're tightening that up with the ratchet, one of the things we should have said before is obviously not to go too tight with it because then when you put the torque wrench on, if it clicks straight away, the chances are that you've possibly over tightened it already. So it's always to make sure that when you're tightening these bolts up, you're just making sure that it's, you know, it's just starting to go tight and you stop, then you get your torque wrench out and then you set it to the correct setting and then wait for that click when you're tightening it. When you're finished with the torque, torque wrench, you just wind it back to the start and that is the front pads back together. So now that we've got the brakes back together, we've just got to put the wheel back on. When we're putting the wheel back on, the way that we like to do it is if we can line the wheel bolts up. So it's imagine that that's 12 o'clock up at the top there, six at the bottom, three and nine. So it's almost like a clock face. You then set the wheel to the same, the same direction as well. So again, 12, six, three and nine. That way that when you pick the wheel up and you put it onto the hub, that you're lining the wheel bolts up and you're not having to chase the wheel around trying to line the holes up. So. Derek's got his wheel bolt there, his wheel there, and he's sliding it on. And because he's lined it up with the 12 and six and three and nine, the wheel bolt should just go straight in there and tighten up. Again, we'll just run these in till they stop. We'll give it a little tighten with the wheel brace. And then when we lower the vehicle, we'll get the torque wrench out. And again, we'll set the torque setting to the correct setting and we'll tighten the wheel up. Right, now that we've got the wheel back on and we've run the bolts up till they touch, we've got the manual here again and we're going to have a look to see what the torque setting is for the road wheels. Um, as you'll see here, road wheels, 110 newton meters yep road wheels 110 newton meters so we've got the half inch torque wrench out and we've set it to 110 newton meters so again when we take this across to the car and we tighten it up we're looking for that click And there we go, that's the wheel torqued back up to the manufacturer specifications there. And again, when we're finished with it, we always set the torque wrench back down to zero.